What is up, everybody? My name is Kashina Butler, or KB. It just depends on which one you want to call me. And this is the first episode of Project Commission Podcast. I'm so excited and I'm so thankful and grateful unto God for his faithfulness and and even allowing me to be in this position. God is so good. I'm so undeserving. But here we are. Here we are. Listen, if you're wondering, what in the world is Project Commission Podcast? What in the world is this podcast going to be? Well, guess what? This is the pilot episode. (laughs) and I'm going to try to explain it the best I know how to and really share um, the vision that God has given me. I'm so excited to see what he does with it. And uh, I really just want him to take control, right? So... Uh, Project Commission is based off of the Great Commission, uh, where Jesus sent the disciples out to proclaim the gospel to the nations and sent the Holy Spirit to empower them to be able to do these things. And through the Holy Spirit, we're able to have these gifts to help build the kingdom of God for the return of Jesus. We're supposed to look like Jesus without spot or blemish, and he's coming back to receive that church And so now it's our job to do our best to try to become like Jesus, to try to follow his example when he came to earth, to walk it out before us. And and, and then he died and he was resurrected three days later and he went, he, he, he gave the disciples instructions. Then he went back to heaven to prepare a place for us, um, I'm so excited. I, I can you how can you not be excited by that news? It is good news. So now we're doing our work. We're there's work to be done. And so now we're just trying to do it, but it does come with the cost. The scriptures tell us and and I think it's first Peter. He says, uh, because Christ suffered, we might suffer too. And because of this, Jesus also said to be my disciple. He says in Luke, he says, to be my disciple, you have to hate your mother, your brother, your sister, your father, your wife, your cousin. Can I add that in there? Your cousin. It doesn't matter who they are. You even have to hate yourself and love him more than anything. That's not saying physically hate them, but it's just saying it's trying to get you to look towards Jesus and say, I love you more than everything else around me. And you're going to dedicate yourself to him and really sell yourself out for him and saying, I am going to be a follower of Christ. I love you more than everything else around me. And because you made this sacrifice, you have to understand that it comes with a cross. Jesus says the same, that same little pericope of, of um, scripture right there. He later on says to be my disciple, you have to carry your own cross to be my disciple. You must count this cost first for what is a constructor that builds homes or houses or whatever else without counting the cost first to see what kind of money he's going to need to build the thing. Because what happens when you start to lay the foundation down and you don't have any more money to build the building, right? So we have to count the cost. We have to understand there is a cost that comes with being a a soul out follower of Christ. And I think we're all supposed to be in that place, but yet we've got it twisted. We've got it wrong. We've kind of like only look towards ministers or pastors, teachers, whatever else. There is ministers in general, and we're saying those are the ones who are soul out for Jesus. But you do not have to be on a platform. You do not have to be in front of a mic. You do not have to have that as a soul out profession. The spirit has empowered men and women to proclaim the goodness of God and the goodness of his son and what he did. You are a follower of Christ. You are to proclaim the gospel in your workplace, in the schools and colleges. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're still called to proclaim the gospel as a disciple, as a follower of Christ. We are all called to proclaim the good news. Jesus is coming back. He died for us. And now we can live eternally if we live righteously following him. He saved us. He has forgiven us. That's the reason he died. He died to forgive our sins. He came to set the captives free. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. But we have to look back up towards him and ask him to help us because without him, who are we? For what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? 
Come on, somebody. That's the word. I'm so excited to see what God does through this. And I really want to bring in uh, ministers. We've actually been um, already been working on all these ministers coming from around the globe, really, uh, to be able to come on this podcast and really talk about real things that people no longer talk about. I don't know why we've lost transparency. We've lost being humble. Everybody wants to be on this stage, but nobody wants to be humble anymore. We go through stuff. It's true. We do go through stuff and there's realities when you start to follow Jesus and you have accepted the call and you're being obedient towards Christ. Uh, it comes with a sacrifice. It does. But the obedience is better than the sacrifice. You have to understand that. It took me a long time to understand what that verse meant. You have to lose everything around you. You have to crucify your flesh. You have to hate sin, man, just to follow him fully with your whole heart and really just trust in him and be obedient and it comes with a sacrifice but the obedience is better than the sacrifice um me and a friend today we're talking about this preacher and i really wish i could remember his name but the illustration he used in uh his sermon is that there was a rope and on this rope it was really long like i mean in the video you really couldn't see the end of the rope but there was probably maybe like two inches of a red strip on it and he said this is your life on earth and then the rest of the rope is eternity man listen your life here on earth will vanish it's nothing but a vapor and but the love of God and God's eternal like living for him and really just giving your life to him to have eternal life and that's forever our brains can't even our brains can't even comprehend how eternal it is and so we're supposed to spend our life here on earth to sacrifice our life um just to be able to worship him for eternity for eternity and that's that's something you really have to think about before you really commit to being a true follower of god um it's just something that's not talked about as much you know, we all talk about um, just the different callings and where you feel called to. But nobody talks about the weight that you have to carry because the cross is heavy. But the grace of it is, is that he's willing to carry our burdens. He's willing to help us carry it. But we do have to turn and follow him with it and kind of ask for help. And so personally in my life, you know, it always wasn't this way. It, it wasn't always like, hey, I got it all together and I'm going to do ministry. Shoot, it's not even like that now. It's, it's, I'm taking one step at a time. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I have to trust that God does. And every step that I take, every move that I make, every every mile that I run every day is something I have to look up to God and say, God, I can't do it without you. And it didn't come as easy as it it hasn't always been easy just to say that, you know, the first walk of my faith, really where I had accepted the call, even before then, you know, I never said, I said I would never be in ministry just because I seen the worst of ministry. I seen preachers and teachers and prophets and evangelists, whatever else is out there. I seen them all turn their back on my family and really um I was hurt by so many people at such a young age because they were so ignorant towards to what they were saying and because of this my heart was hardened towards ministry and you know I've forgiven all of these people but it took a long time for me to truly give it back over to God I was actually in college I didn't really recognize that I was as hurt as I was until the Lord started stripping me down to the bone and clearing out the marrow, dude. And then he, he filled me up. Um, he stripped me down and that hurt. Growing pains hurt. You know, it hurt to be separated from um, the flesh. And the scriptures talk about that in Hebrews being separated, that the word of God is a double edged sword and it separates the spirit from the flesh the bone from the mirror <laughs> like you know I think as I think it's bone and joint I said bone and marrow but either way um 
and it hurts. It's not something that just goes by and it's easy. You know, it was hard. And, and I didn't really consider all of these things before I stepped into ministry, but I loved God more. You know, pain was temporary and I knew that God was going to fix everything because he perfects the things that concerned me. And my faith was strong because of the walk I walked before I walked into ministry. Um, just coming from a place of being broken um, from people. And I'm so like, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm so thankful that what happened in my life happened. Um, I know some people think I'm insane if you knew my story and maybe I'll get to talk about it on here. They're like, what are you talking about? A lot of people were hurt from that. But I would not be the person I would never had learned. I won't say never, but, you know, from my perspective, I don't think I would never have been in the place that I'm in now because I had to learn how to fully depend on God. And from an early age, I had to learn how to lean in, how to pray, how to seek God out. And even though it was like what I would call elementary stages of that, it was my foundation. So then when I did move away, when God really started to challenge me and separated me from my family and I had to be here alone. Yes, I had friends and yes, I had, you know, people, I had a roommate, all this different stuff. Um, I was still alone. I I left a very tight knit community, a uh, Native American community, and I had no idea what I was leaving. I was really close to my family. And for the first couple of weeks, I was just so broken because I missed my family so much. That was all I had for so long. And God was like, what would happen if I would remove everything else? What if I told you to never move home, move back home? I remember that broke me. I was like, Lord, what you mean? <laughs> and um, so, you know, as as easy as it was to say yes to the obedience, the sacrifice that came with it was hard, you know, Um but I don't regret a single mile of it. I, I, I'm I thankful that God was like, you know what? I'm going to sing you in this direction. I won't say every <laughs> every single moment I was just like, yep, this is great. I'm thankful for it. Because there was definitely times I was like, God, why in the world am I walking through the place that I'm walking through? And I'm still like that even today. Um, I see here in front of uh, his, it's genuinely uh, midnight. And... I'm sitting here at my desk with a microphone and I'm recording this and I'm, I am I can't help but think, God, why me? You know, I'm nothing but, uh, I would say the word is, I would be like, uh, I'm nothing but a little loan from Robinson County that, you know, barely had anything. You always gave me what I needed. Uh, I didn't really have all the things I wanted growing up, but, you know, you were faithful and I don't understand why he wants me here in this mic sounding like cornbread and not really necessarily uh, being fluent with words and being able to say everything that I feel like um, I f say everything politically correct and all these different things. But God was like, you know what? I still love you enough that I, I you got this, you know, you walk with me in this every every step that you have that. Every every opportunity that I give you, you're gonna lack in position because I have to fill those positions. If we if we kept on going in positions that we think we were qualified for, we wouldn't need God. And so God has to put us in positions, and really He doesn't have to, but He He does, so that we have to lean into Him. Because if we don't, we're just gonna be good at everything we do, and we really don't need God. And so I think that's the beauty of it reality uh because I need him so much like I'm I'm really I tell everybody I'm I'm in the box and he can send me wherever because I know that he's all I need he'll provide and he'll do whatever it takes to do whatever he has to do to make sure his his gospel is proclaimed and that's all I'm here for that's the only reason I'm on earth is to proclaim his gospel and of course, there's desires that I have, like, you know, one day I want a family, I want to get married, all of these different things. But until God says it's time, I'm just going to be here doing what he's called me to do. And that is my heart. And that's the truth, you know.
but yeah that's something you kind of have to have to deal with and have to be real about and that's something we just don't see as much in the Christian communities and I am thankful that there is a generation that's rising up that is more transparent about what's going on especially like with this whole deliverance movement and there's a lot of like positive and negative aspects in it you have like <laughs> false prophets and everything coming out of the woodworks and they're saying you know what they're doing is correct and you know people's got all of these opinions about it and everything else but at the same time, the same time that the enemy's trying to work so hard to break the kingdom of God, God's raising a remnant and this remnant cannot be shaken and cannot be moved. And they're standing on a firm foundation and they're not going to be moved. They're not going to be shaken. They're not going to, they're not going to back down from nobody. Why? Because they have God. He's everything they need. And I thank Jesus. I thank God that he sent Jesus to come to earth to kind of walk that out before us and that's the gospel like Jesus came to earth so that he could walk a life out for us that we're able to be in the positions that we're in it doesn't matter who you are and I just want to make it clear this isn't about me I mean I'm talking about myself but it's only because I'm trying to you know I want to be friends with you guys so I want you guys to know me a little bit more you know <laughs> no but I, I seriously I you know, there's so much, um, there's so much Jesus, Jesus came to earth and he walked a walk. He called his disciples. He called them by name. They sat down everything. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. And, and I always live in, uh, Matthew where it talks about, um, Peter and, uh, Andrew and, James and John being called to uh, basically put down what they had. So it was, they were fisher, they were fishermen. And Jesus was like, no, I've called you to be fishers of men. And <laughs> because of this, they sat down, they put down, I mean, I would say fishing poles, but it was really nets during the time, but they put their nets down and they left what they had in the position that it was in and they got up and lived and followed Jesus. And sometimes that's the same thing we have to do. We leave the things that we kind of have created a lifestyle out of and that we leave it in that position and we turn around and follow God. It's a 180 turnaround, follow Jesus. And, and because he, he got these people, we can kind of look at their stories and kind of find a relationship in them and be like, Dude, I'm a little bit like Peter sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little bit like uh, <clears throat> John sometimes, you know. So you you find these relationships within these people, and you're like, we're kind of similar, you know. And that's and we can kind of model after that. But the reality is, we do not model ourselves after the disciples, but we're trying to be like Jesus. And so I think there is this generation that's rising up. That's like I understand that now. I didn't understand it back then. But I understand that now. And so I'm trying to be like Jesus and, you know, I'm trying to do whatever it takes to get like him. And that's the goal. We want to we want to be like Jesus as much as possible. Anyways, I don't mean to rant. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I went on a rabbit trail. But yeah, so that's that's what this podcast is. We're going to put ourselves in real positions. You know, um, you will have to hear my story over and over again. Don't worry. I'm bringing in friends and some family members and people I meet just to have these conversations because um, it's a perspective. Not all of us have the same, we haven't walked the same walk, but we're walking, or you should be walking the same road, straight and narrow, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, so the thing about it is, is Will, something I really had to learn is that um, something that was hard for me walking down this road was people pleasing. <laughs> I wanted to please everybody. And, and it honestly came from a place of trauma. Um, <laughs> I dealt with so much hurt growing up that I didn't want anybody else to go through hurt. And so I would try to people please my way. <laughs> I've always been sensitive. Like I, I'm a really bold person. Um, and I really don't get moved emotionally a lot. Um, at least not now, but as a child, 
I was that child that would have cried at a drop of a hat. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, my emotions was in a lot of stuff. And so when I was hurt through just family, different family stuff and people and church hurt <laughs> stuff. And when I was hurt, you know, I didn't want anybody else to feel that pain. So I would please, I would try to please people so much. And I genuinely think it's, it's a generational curse of people pleasing because and the reason I can say that is is I look back at some of my family members now and I'm like girl that ain't Bible that's people pleasing and I just <laughs> they be looking at me like I'm crazy uh anyways that's all rant but um we I struggled with people pleasing to a, such a point I almost lost my relationship with God you know I was trying to make people feel good feel comfortable around me but I realized you know and the Holy Spirit really empowered me to understand my job is not to people please, but to please Christ. And, you know, I later found out in Galatians 1 and 10, he says, Paul, this is Paul talking. And he says, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but God, if I'm people pleasing or I'm pleasing people, where my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. And so <laughs> that was such a, a real thing for me because I was like, okay, God, I'm your servant. I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. And don't get me wrong, like understanding that, we do not get the heaven by our works and um, I can do this all day long, but this is not how I'm going to get to heaven. It's my relationship that w that I have with God that's going to get me to heaven. But my point is, I'm still your servant. I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. And um, I need you to help me with this people pleasing. because <laughs> I don't know how to not. And it was affecting my walk with God, even to the point where I felt like I was going to make God so upset with certain things that I didn't feel like I could be forgiven or I felt like I wouldn't be, um, I couldn't come out of the place that I was in. It was just, it was a lot. Like, let's be real. It was a lot. It was a, it was a really big moment for me. Um, it took me two years really to get out of it. Um, there was friends I had made early on in my, in college I was trying to people please with them. I didn't even know them when I first met them, but I was so terrified of hurting them. Um, so even sometimes I would make these stories up, not necessarily people so much so like it wasn't me anymore. I, I was trying to to make myself this person I really wasn't. And um, for a long time, it bothered me and I had to repent before God for it because I was trying to place my identity and everything around me except God. And that was a weight that took a long time to come up and off of me. It was a walk I had to go through. It was an instant deliverance. I really wish it would have been, but it, it was something I had to walk through, and God really had to teach me to discipline myself through that too. And these are, I mean, this is just one thing out of a thousand. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that we walk through as ministers that is just so heavy. And it is stuff that we we necessarily don't talk about often. You know, uh, how many people in ministry go through depression and anxiety? How many ministers think of suicidal thoughts? Um, how many ministers are dealing with lust? There's a lot of stuff that uh, people are walking through. And it's because, you know, you're trying to look for an outlet. You're trying to look for a different place. It's hard. It's, it, it really is hard. And I'm not saying like I approve of people, you know, watching porn and stuff being ministers, but I do know the weight and the struggle that it comes with and my heart goes out to them. And but at the same time, you know, um, it's where we should be able to sit at a table and be corrected. The issue is, is when you don't want to be corrected anymore. I'm not trying to promote depression, anxiety, um, lust adultery, fornication. I'm not trying to say I promote any of these things, but the truth is that ministers, people that follow the word and they are taking these leadership positions to lead other followers, they are held accountable um, even to a higher extent. That's what First Timothy tells us. And I'm compa I, I, my heart longs um, to see them set free and delivered. Uh, but the reality is when you step into ministry, temptation comes even more temptation tries to me as you're getting ready to step into ministry as as you're getting ready to be in that position 
you are going to be tempted more so than average. So when you struggle with lust, when you struggle with these things and you have not submitted it back to God, you're going to struggle with this even amplified more. So that's why I'm saying it's so important to talk about these things because you have to understand that if you're not willing to get this under the blood as a non-minister, then it's going to be even harder to do it as a person who has stepped into a ministry position. Um, so that's the truth and that's the reality of it. And that's what this podcast is. That's what we're going to be talking about. It's real. It's transparent. It's raw. I think we've got to a place as the body and it's hard for us to be um, really humbled before God again. We have gotten to a place as ministers that we want the sage we want the lights, we want all these different things, but we're not willing to be humble before our brothers and our sisters, but most importantly, God. We have to give these things back to him so that he can take them from us, that he can set us free. That's what he came to do. Jesus came on earth to set the captives free. And so that's why deliverance is so important but he also came to heal broken pieces where we have been broken, where we have been hurt by the church, where we have. He came to heal that. He also came to heal physical sicknesses. There's a lot of different things that happen within the body. No one wants to talk about because of pride, because of religiosity, because of different things. No one wants to talk about this stuff. That's what that's what this is. And I'm really hoping that um, I I'm able to talk about things that people are really going through and, and not just ministers, but followers of Christ too. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard. It, it really is. It's hard to follow Jesus. Um, I, I say all the time, salvation is free. But when you sell your soul out for Jesus, that comes with the sacrifice. Because the scriptures say, because Christ suffered, we might suffer too. And that's the hardest thing to grasp a concept of because we want to do these things. We want to live for God. We want to do these radical things, but yet we don't want to humble ourselves down and we don't want to go to our, our brothers and sisters Christ and profess our sins. That's what James talks about, profess your sins in front of them because of the prayer of the righteous availeth much. We're able to pray for these things, but because of the judgment in the church, because of the brokenness in the church, the system of the church, not the actual body, the system of the church, we're unable to do these things. But I think it's time for the body to step out of that. And I'm hoping that God uses this podcast as a tool to be able to bring these things to light so that he can handle them. We give this entire podcast back to God and we're giving this podcast back to Jesus and we're saying you take control. Everything that is spoken in the mics, everything that's spoken um, on the camera, it doesn't matter whatever's spoken that is in the atmosphere for God. And that is a direct communication that we can pray for each other, that we can grow with each other. So I just want to pray us out, man, and really just just pray that the Holy Spirit just guides each episode from here on out and really dedicate um, this podcast back to God. We need him more so than ever. And um, in this podcast, I really need him because I don't want to speak out of my own my own emotions, but I want to speak out of the word of God. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for today. God, and we thank you for your love and your mercy. God, we thank you for the position that we're in now, even though it might not be the position that we think we should be in. God, we still thank you because you're in control and you're God and you're holy. And we thank you. We thank you. God, I just want to dedicate this podcast to you. God, I want to give it fully unto you. God, I thank you because you are God and you are God alone. And God, I need you to take this podcast into your hands so that it's not in my hands. But God, I just thank you, God, that you can still touch souls through this podcast, that you can still do the great through this podcast. God, let your will be done. Let salvation come out of this podcast. Let deliverance come out of this podcast. Let healing come out of this podcast. God, every conversation, let it be led by you. God, every conversation, every prayer, every subject, 
be ordained by you. Father, I just give you the praise and the glory in advance because I know that your kingdom will expand if your hand is in it. So, Father, please don't take your hand off of it. God, let us remain in the glory. Let us remain in your presence. And, God, we just thank you and we glorify you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying over the listener who is listening and has stayed this long. God, I just pray, God, that you meet the needs of your people. God, and if there's anything that's coming against them, Father, we break the attack of the enemy. And, Father, we cast it back to the abyss. And, God, we just thank you that you are God and that you can be God, that we're able to pray these things. And through the blood of Jesus, that there is freedom and there is liberty and we're already victorious in the battle. Uh, God, I just thank you. I thank you for the call. I thank you that you call us. God, I thank you for your son. I thank you for your son that came to earth to live as that sacrifice, to live as that example for us. And because Christ suffered, we might suffer too. And God, I still thank you for that because he made it through it. He made it through it, God, and he was faithful to you until the end. So, Father, help us be faithful. Help us bear your fruit. God, I thank you and I glorify you in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all check us out every Friday, every Friday. Check us out. Thank you again. Bye.